For years, I have actually come to like the holiday classic, Miracle on 34th Street, from 1947. Well, I am going to say that I have seen the 1994 film, which I will review next December, or when it celebrates its anniversary, but, and those two get a lot of time about, but not these television takes on it. I know there were two from 1955 and 1959, and this film, which is this one, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary today. So get ready for a special review of Miracle on 34th Street from 1973. Ho, 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 this is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Ho, ho, ho. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Doyle, better known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 1973 made-for-TV Christmas dramedy fantasy take of Miracle on 34th Street. This was produced by 20th Century Fox Television, along with Norman Rosemont Enterprises, Incorporated. Directed by Fielder Cook, it's the third overall remake of the 1947 film. Of course, I mentioned, as I mentioned before, there were two others in 1955 and 1959. I've seen the 55 one, I haven't seen the 59 one. But, well, when next December comes, I will review both of those in a little back to back review, telling you what I think about them. Anyway. Additionally, for this film, the New York City-based Macy's department store allowed their name to be used in the film, unlike the later version, which of course came out in 1994. But again, as I've said already, I'll review that next year as well. The film stars Sebastian Cabot, along with Jane Alexander, David Harmon, Jim Backus, Tom Bosley, David Doyle, James Gregory, Ryan McDowell, Roland Winters, and Su Van Davidson in our, in our first film. Now, unlike other versions of this, this had two musical numbers. And one of them was actually Miracles. Anyway, now, as you may know, when Old Man spies the department store Santa Claus getting drunk before taking part in the Macy's Thanksgiving parade, he immediately complains to Mrs. Walker, whose name is Karen in this film. She fires her Santa, and the old man, who is named Chris Kringle, volunteers to take his place for the children's sake. Chris does so well, he is hired to be the store's main Santa for the holidays. At the same time, Karen's daughter, Susan, an intellect... And, excuse me, I'm getting my, my tongue tied. Intelligent but cynical six-year-old meets her new neighbor, Bill Schaffner, a lawyer, and decides to try and hook him up with her mother. Chris, to the horror of Mr. Shillhammer, sends customers to other stores if they cannot find what they are looking for. The public embraces his actions as a goodwill marketing campaign and sales skyrocket, leading the profit-obsessed Mr. Macy to pursue the campaign. However, Karen and Shellhammer learn that Chris believes himself to be actually Santa. A fact they frantically try to hide from their boss. The store psychiatrist, Dr. Sawyer, initially takes Chris on as a fascinating case study. But Chris is believed it, that it is Sawyer who has a, the problem makes him an enemy. Chris finds a kindred spirit in the janitor, Alfred, who gets joy out of dressing as Santa at the local YMCA every year. He also learns that Susan has been raised to not believe in Santa Claus or possess an imagination, two things he intends to correct. Susan herself is further convinced of his authenticity because he has a real beard and speaks Spanish to a young girl who does not speak English. So, through their friendship with Chris, who becomes Bill's roommate, Bill becomes closer to Karen, who is overworked and looking for companionship, and Susan begins to learn the value of imagination. She eventually asks Chris to get her a new house for Christmas to prove that he is Santa, and later for help in ins ensuring Bill becomes her new father. Chris eventually passes the word on to Bill, who arranges for a real estate contract for Karen for a similar house and insists 
she bought a house for Susan's sake. But anyway, things take a turn for the worse when Sarah Sawyer antagonizes Chris. And he eventually throws a pie at fate in its face and what have you. But I think you know the rest of the story. Please stand by. I shall return. Sorry about that. But anyway, even after that little incident, Karen agrees to allow Sawyer to evaluate him again. And after Chris helps Alfred with his yearly Santa Claus routine, Sawyer confronts him and lies to Chris and tells him that Karen believes him to be a menace. Yeah. So I think you'll know the rest. In a way, kind of like the original. But anyway, that's all the story I'm going to give to you. Because this film, this is probably going to be the first review to ever come up on this here remake. Anyway, what did I think of this film? I thought it was pretty good and what have you. This film premiered on, originally premiered on CBS on this day, December 14th, 1973. Henceforth, today is the film's 50th anniversary. But no one... On YouTube, I've looked, you, no one on YouTube's ever reviewed this one, but I'm saying, it. I've said it before, I'll say it again, that's going to change with this one. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what did I think of it? Again, as I've said, it's pretty, It's not bad, it's pretty good. I kind of think this would probably be a good one right behind the original and what have you. Now... The New York Times uh, wondered why a network would bother to remake a seasonal favorite like the original movie, but, but said it has matched the Hollywood film very nicely. Norman Rosemont's expansive production has real seasonal gleam. Howard Thompson who was the reviewer. He praised a Wayne cast, especially Sebastian Cabot. He's charming, although no Santa, of course could match the gentle whimsy of the late Edmund Gwynn in the movie, including that two good miracles should make the season merrier. I agree. Sebastian Cabot may not be no, may, may not be able to match up to the late great Edmund Gwynn of the original film, but I give him credit for what he had to offer, even though he's no longer with us. May he rest in peace. Now, though he was known for having a beard at the time that the film was being made, he instead shaved it off and wore a false beard for the role due to the makeup arts failing at widening his natural beard. Notably, the dialogue in which Susan discovers his beard is real is still kept. Now, actually, Natalie Wood, who played Susan in the original film, was originally offered the role of Karen with the idea that her real-life daughter would play Susan and Robert Wagner, her husband at the time, would play Bill. But she declined due to concerns over her daughter being too young to start acting. And another thing is, this is kind of strange, the film was very clearly shot during the summer as many outdoor shots depict lush green trees. That's kind of... Oh, you, you'll, you'll find it. Well, you'll know when you see it. And Sid Raymond did the score for this, and I'm going to say that yeah, was pretty good, too. The two songs you hear in this is, are very good, too. Now, as for our cast, we have Sebastian Cabot as Chris Kringle. Again, as I've said, may not be a... Be, his Sam may not be quite close to as, well, to as good as Edmund Gwynn, but still not too bad. Jane Alexander played Karen Walker. Now, of course... Um, well, she's done several films, and she's been in um, other films, um, including The Great White Hope. She's also been in All the President's Men and Kramer vs. Kramer as well. Now, David Hardman played Bill Schaffner. And he's done some things, and he was actually, well... And this was before he became one of the first the first host of ABC's Good Morning America later on. Ryan McDowell plays Harry Sawyer. He had already recently worked on most of the Planet of the Apes films for Fox. Of course, the following year, he would return to play one of the characters in the Planet of the Apes TV series, which also aired on CBS. And, and this wouldn't be McDowell's first time to work in a holiday 
Lakers special. He had recently died for Rankin Bass's Cricket on the Hearth. Jim Backus, you may remember him from Gilligan's Island and the voice of Mr. Magoo, played Horace Shellhammer. He was pretty good. Barry Greenberg played Alfred. He was good. David Doyle played R.H. Macy. He's pretty good. Tom Bosley, and this was just slightly before he played um, Mr. C, you know, Mr. Cunningham on TV's Happy Days the following year. And I don't even know he was already well known for voicing Harry Boyle in Hal Barbera's primetime animated series Wait Till Your Father Gets Home, voiced, well, not, I mean, played Judge Henry Harper. And James Gregory played Deputy District Attorney Thomas J. Mara. And Roland Winters played Mr. Gimble. We also have the late great comrade Janice, whom we sadly lost last March. Of course, I knew him best from Mork and Mindy and um, Oh God, Book 2. He played the character Dr. Pierce. So the cast isn't too bad, but I've got to give it to young Suzanne Davidson, who played Susan. I'm going to say, well, she might not be no Natalie Wood, but still, she's very good in Miami. I liked her. She was good. So anyway, The Miracle on 34th Street Remake from 1974. It's pretty good in what have you. I'm not sure if you think it's the best, though. I mean, a lot of us like the original uh, a whole lot and what have you. But anyway... With everything said, it's the story's pretty good, and I do like the music and the score, and it's great cast and what have you. So overall, would I recommend it? I'd say sure, go ahead, or maybe give it a one-time watch, just if you're curious. The full movie's on YouTube, but but mind you, watch, look up the one. If you look it up, just find the one that says unedited version. That way, you'll be able to see the film in, in its entirety. The film is also available to buy or rent on Flicks Fling and available with a subscription to Hoopla. That would be your best chance to see this, because this isn't available on physical media completely. Now, I think it is on bootleg DVDs, but that's it. So anyway, best of luck in finding this. If you have seen the Miracle on 34th Street remake from 1973, let me know. And I'll try, and later on I'll leave you a a link to the to the vid on here that I, that I told you about, okay? So, tell me what you thought about the film in the comment section below. If you liked the video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a re-review of Superman from 1978. Another anniversary review coming up. Alright, so if you like this, consider checking out these other films. Of the, for the holidays. In the upper left hand corner is my review of the original Miracle on 34th Street. Or go to the upper right hand corner and see my review of uh, the classic, another holiday classic from the 1940s, and that's It's a Wonderful Life. Or if you would like, go to the bottom left hand corner and see my recent review for a film Sebastian Kebbit had recently lent his voice to. And that would be Disney's anime classic, The Jungle Book. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.